What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and in this episode we'll be covering the top five basic things you need to know about Envision Studio. Studio is a new design tool that's put out by the people over at Envision. It is absolutely free and it's jam packed full of features. So in this video we're going to be covering the five basic things to get you up and running using the software. Importing your documents from Sketch, a basic tour of the UI, using basic shapes and artboards as well as layouts and grids. And in the next video I'm going to be covering the five advanced things you need to know about Studio. With all that being said, I'm ready to dive in. I hope you are too. Let's do it. All right, we're gonna dive right in and start checking out Envision Studio. To do that, I uh, obviously wanna download it, it's free to download. Now that I have it installed, I'm gonna go ahead and launch Envision Studio, and when I do that, I'm gonna get this great little launch screen that's coming up right now. Over to the left, we have different sizes that we can start our project in, and this would be a blank canvas, maybe some desktop, iPad, or different phone sizes. We also have some resources and tutorials down below, which is a good thing to check out if you feel like this video has not given you all that you need. Then we dive right into the first thing you should know about Envision Studio is that it's really, really good at importing sketch files. Number one, right from the launch screen, it allows me to open a studio or a sketch file. So I can tap right here, go searching for the sketch file that I want to open, and press open. And it's going to uh, transition everything over to layers and groups and paths, and even symbols and sketch become components in Envision Studio. The second way you can import things from Sketch is to open up a new file, head up to File, and Import, and you'll get the same process. But the last way that's really, really cool is if you have your Sketch file open and you just wanna take one element, you can Command-C copy from there, come over to Envision Studio, and Command-V paste, and it will give you that element and all of its different layers and everything right there. Okay, now that you know how to transition from something like Sketch into Envision Studio, let's do a brief tour of the UI. In the very center of the screen, you'll see our canvas, which is currently highlighting an artboard. We'll talk more about artboards later, but this area that is kind of infinite, in fact, is a canvas area where you can do lots of work. I can hold spacebar and move around my canvas. I can zoom in and out by pressing Command or Control minus or plus. Quick fact, if you don't like the dark interface, you can always go up to View, Theme, and change over to the light theme. I prefer the dark theme, so we're gonna stick with that for this tutorial. Let's move over to the left panel and see what it has for us. At the very top, you can see there's a whole section dedicated to pages. Right now, we are on page one. I could double click and rename this the game page. I can create a new page, which will create a blank canvas. And the minute I put a new artboard on it, it's going to focus on that artboard. You can see new pages are represented in that pages area after you make them. You can also delete them or duplicate them by right clicking and simply kind of managing them like so. There's currently in this document a symbols page where you can find all of the symbols that were brought over from Sketch. That doesn't necessarily have to be there. You can delete those without worrying about your components being affected. The reason that Studio doesn't care about some sort of master symbols page is because it doesn't rely on a page to hold all of those symbols or components in this case. It has a library section. So we can roll open the library section. Currently we're connected to the documents library. If I tap on that, all of my components come up and I can grab any one of those components and drag them onto the canvas. This is where all of your components live inside of Envision Studio. But back up to our pages section, if you click on pages and you click on a specific page you're on, you will see all of the layers down here. This next spot is for all of the different layers that are currently on that page. And so we have an artboard that's right here. That's kind of like your master kind of like line item. And as I twirl that open, we'll get all the individual layers. As I roll over them, you can see they're highlighted on the screen. Um, Envision Studio works like most other design platforms where you have layers. You can rearrange your layers by dragging them above or below. I can right click and manipulate those layers by grouping them, ungrouping them, moving them around and assigning them to be, you know, to the front or to the back. You can lock them and hide them. All of the basic things you could do in most design softwares nowadays are available here in the layers panel. Moving on to the top bar of Studio, you have this plus icon, which when you tap it, opens up all the opportunities to insert different things onto the canvas, like new artboards, shapes, paths, text, and image. They all have really, really simple hotkeys to remember. So A for artboard, R for rectangle, O for oval, U for rounded, 
square, which I guess makes sense because it's kind of rounded at the bottom of it. I like that one. In the very center of the top bar, if you have nothing selected on an artboard, you'll see the name of the document you're currently working on and whether or not it has any unsaved changes like I do right now. By pressing Command S, I can go ahead and save those changes. I'm all good to go. But the minute I select an element on an artboard, I get a slew of other options in that top section. This is going to allow you to do things like make interactions between artboards, create components, work with paths by either snipping sections of the path or editing those paths, and having some basic Boolean operations like unionizing shapes, subtracting them, dividing them, all those good things, as well as creating masks with shape elements and photos and all that kind of stuff, and also rotating things. When we jump over to the right hand panel, you'll see this is the details panel with the ability to align and distribute things. Of course, you have the ability to manipulate the X and the Y values, the width and the height, as well as rotating things, flipping them horizontally or vertically. We have some responsive resizing options here, which we'll talk about later, as well as your blending, opacity, and border radius controls. Really cool. You can actually tap right here and give individual border radius controls for each corner, so that's kind of nice precision control. What follows next in the details panel is very contextual depending on what you've tapped on. So currently I have a group and it's going to give me some options for fills and borders and shadows. If I click on some text, I'm going to get typography options. If I click on an image, I'm going to get more image and fill options. So that's very contextual depending on what you're currently interacting with. On almost everything you click at, you're always going to get interaction options here in this panel because prototyping and animation is such a huge part of Envision Studio. And that is a brief tour of the UI. Not so bad, huh? One of the next things you're going to need to know how to do is use artboards in Envision Studio. And to do that, there's a few ways, but number one, you can head up to the plus button we already talked about, and you can tap on artboard. The hot key for that is A, but when I tap either one of those, I'm going to get a whole artboard selection over the right hand side, as well as a big black and white cursor that will allow me to draw a custom artboard of any size I so choose. I think it's important to note that at the top right of each artboard, that artboard is designated with a name, and you can double click in the layers panel on that artboard to rename it. Like maybe I want to name this artboard hello. I can do that. It's also really important to note that the first artboard I create is going to have this little house icon to the top left of it. That tells Envision Studio that this is the beginning of your prototype that you probably will make in the future. If you'd like to change that to maybe the artboard hello, we just tap on that artboard, head over to our details panel and hit the little house symbol. There can only be one home. There can only be one start and one finish. And this is your start. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to know how to do in Studio is turn on the grids or the layouts or the guides so you can measure your designs as you're going and have some precision as you are creating. To do that, you're going to tap on any artboard and in the details panel, you'll get the layout grids. There's three different options. You have either columns, rows, or grids. Let's explore each one of them. Tapping the columns checkbox is going to turn on vertical columns that you can dictate by pressing over here on the more button and decide how many columns you want, what their gutter width should be, and what their margin should be as well as the colors. Next below that you can turn on rows which is basically the horizontal version of what we've already talked about and then after that you can turn on grids and deciding what type of grid, how small, how precise you want it to be and what color you want it to be. And the last basic thing you need to know in studio is how to add shapes and design elements onto your artboards or canvas. The first way is really easy. We already kind of talked about it. You can jump up to the plus menu and insert any shapes, path, text, or images. You can also learn the hotkeys pretty easily and just start slapping them in like so. R for rectangle, O for oval, T for text, and I for image, which will send you out to your computer to find an image and import it just like so. So as I move things around, all of these pink kind of guides that are snapping up everywhere. Those are smart guides telling me I've either hit the middle of the canvas vertically or horizontally. I can have one element selected and hold down the option button and just point to any other element to get some sort of measurement. So there's a lot of smart guides and snapping going on as well. And that's pretty much shapes and design elements in Envision Studio. Well, that's it. Those are the five basic things you need to know to get up and running today with Envision Studio. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and also hit that little bell notification icon so you know when another video like this one comes out. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I hope you guys are having an awesome week designing amazing things, making amazing things, and feeling a little bit more confident about your design tool of choice. I'll see you in the next one.